Hey guys, I am back and we have a tack pack here courtesy of Kevin. We also have a Cosmo Tiger courtesy of me. There we go. Um, let's get into tack pack for March in this year 2023 and I swear I almost just said 2013 because that's how tired I am. I can't even cut tape right now. Maybe I shouldn't even be doing this. But here we go. So. Hmm. Well, that looks like a weird bug thing right there. So I will remind folks that uh, as we look through Tac Tac, this is going to have a lot of shooting related stuff. Shoot, shoot, bullet, bullet, gun, gun. So if you are not into that stuff, just go ahead and click off the video. It's not going to be for you. You're not going to enjoy it. And, you know, there'll be another one more to your liking really soon. But Tac Pack is um, more of a, a gun enthusiast type box. I'm going to move that power cord off of this. Power, not para, cord. So Kevin who this is his subscription and has it sent here and then we unbox it and then me and Kevin every few months get to hang out and uh, give it back to him and have a good old time talking smack about stuff. So we're going to check this out and see what, wow, this is heavy. We're going to see what we got in this month's subscription. This is, oh, this is about the knife. So I'm not going to look at this yet. I'm going to put it aside. This is the Tac Pack uh, Plus. So this is like the bigger the bigger subscription, the bigger box, you know, has a higher value and an extra item. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven items, two plus items in this one, including the sticker. And, you know, my favorite part of Tac Pack is always the sticker. And this is the sticker this month. Lucky armed. They always, I shouldn't say always, usually do, you know, some kind of, well, I mean, Kevin usually lets me keep the sticker. Every once in a while, Kevin really likes the sticker. Like, he loved the Optimus Prime one, um, and he wanted that one. But, you know, of course, if he wants the sticker, who am I to say, you know, and it's, it's just awesome that he lets me keep the sticker usually. But they always do, like, a cartoony, armed-up version of something, you know, regular stuff. So that's cool. And, you know, St. Patrick's Day, it's the, it's the leprechaun. It's the, you know. That's cool. All right, so get that out of the way right there. So let's see which we got. Um, we Oh, we're going to start with the knife. Okay. American Buffalo Knife and Tool Tack Pack Knife Collab. Okay. Um, as you longtime subscribers know, which I am not, some of you might be, ABKT was one of our very first vendor partners when Tack Pack started over seven years ago now. Now, I will tell you, just as a side note, um, way back when probably seven years ago now, um, something like that. I I did subscribe to Tac Pack when I was active duty living in Florida, and I was not impressed. I got a couple of them, one of them or two of them, and I was like, nope, done, didn't like it. Um, and But it, I feel like it's different then than it was now. So anyway, there you go. Um, the $60 value knife, $60 MSRP probably, in parentheses, trying to do parentheses um, is a one of a kind let's say tech pack special with the gold black livery insanely sharp right back so that's cool that it's you know uh i guess i don't know we'll see if if it can be found anywhere d2 steel they say american buffalo knife and tool company but strangely enough i think everything i've seen from an american buffalo knife and tool company is made in when you see prc that's their not so secret code people's republic of china it's made in china um, and yeah no it's not gold it's, it's gold colored it's brass or it's anodized you know anodized aluminum or steel it's not, it's not we know it's not gold let's not Let's everybody just calm the fuck down for a second, okay? Uh, that is pretty nice action. 
pretty smooth. It's obviously got bearings. You guys remember when bearings were special and expensive? And now it's like standard feature. That's how the industry goes. Like when D2 was a special premium steel and now it's, you know, in everything. So Tonto blade shape is like not my favorite. I, I'm not that attracted to it, but there are people who really like it. Uh, it is a fairly comfortable handle. Nice work on the G10. I can't tell if that's a... I feel like that's a plastic backspacer, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's maybe it's G10 also. A little bit of milling going on in the liners to lighten it up a little bit. Nice weight though. It's it's lightweight. Centered really nice. Pretty decent jimping over there. Let's see. I found out that Aiden has been availing himself of cutting money. And at his school, they call it pants money. I, I don't know. I don't want to know. Got a decent edge on it. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't be something I'd choose to carry around personally. Um, you can reverse the clip left or right. I think maybe for big tack pack fans, it might mean more that it's, you know, a tack pack only. Although, I don't know, we'll see if we can find it somewhere. Um, I, it just... I don't know, I'm sure there are people that really do like it. I'm just, I'm not a big fan of the, the gold, you know? The very bright and out there gold. That's not... It's not for me, but it's, it's got nice action. Um, fit and finish is... Is... Uh, Good, not great, but not bad. And I mean, there's, there's no, they, they, they only put prices on the plus items. So I, you know, they say it's a $60 value, but again, that all goes MSRP. Um, I guess this one really goes down to your personal preference. So not bad, not great, but at least it's something for the non shooters among us to enjoy. You know what I mean? Next, we've got the USA Tactical D4 two-point sling. Don't require any crazy mounts for it. It can uh, just it can hook up to any rings you got, which is cool. And a decent two-point sling is cool. Look at that. It's, it's a sling. It's it's just a standard sling. It's a regular old not. Super Secret Squirrel Special Forces Sling. And you don't see a lot of boxes putting that out these days, you know? They, everybody wants uh, some kind of shock cord. Um, I forgot the attachment point right now. QD mount, um, you know, one point. I hate one point sling, single point slings, by the way. Um, if you, uh, and I, I know I might be in the majority, the minority here, but if you've if you've had a single point sling um, on a deployment and and that thing just bangs into all of you in every opportunity as you're trying to do anything else, um, I, that's me. I just don't I don't like it. Um, I really did like three point slings. They they kept they kept your weapon really secure against your body until you needed to bring it out from your body to use a little bit. I don't know. That's I like I, I like I like three point slings. Um, they I don't know. I just didn't. I, I like them. But I'm an old guy. I'm an old guy, and I like what I like, and I don't like change. Um, and I will be yelling at kids to get off my lawn one day soon. Um, but, you know, just a standard old sling. Old school, simple. I could get behind this. Um, okay, cool. It is what it is. Walker's Icon Glasses. So, Walker, not like you are a walker or like for someone who walks, but like Walker's the brand. At least they gave us a knife. Wait, there's more. Now how much tape can you cut? But wait, there's more. Okay, let's try that.
So Icon, I guess the model is Tanker. And it's Velcroed in. Ow. I don't want to get my fingers on these lenses. All right, so is there inside this box, is there, I'm thinking there's like a case in there or something? What's, what's in here? What are you hiding? Yeah, there's a case in the box. So, I got a little microfiber cloth. I like this. It's a rigid type case for the glasses, though. Are these polarized? Let's find out. High gloss black frame and arms. EVA foam nose pads, impact resistant lenses. I only thought they might be polarized because, you know, they got this, some rainbow look on them. Um, I don't see anything about that though. They exceed ANSI Z87.1. Uh, high impact, mil spec. Okay. And it says the icing on the cake is they look just plain cool. Is that true? You be the judge. Now, so. All right, we are judging the coolness based on my face, which I know takes a few points away from it. Sorry, don't blame the glasses. Blame my parents. Uh, what can I say? But they actually are very lightweight. They they feel nice. I mean, they don't feel like anything, really, which is good. That's a good thing. You don't want, like, bulky glasses on your face. Um, They don't let a lot of light in from around the sides which is also a good thing unfortunately you know unless they make prescription lenses for them that you can order you know uh like i i have i have oakley's that i you know i have just because you can get prescription lenses made for oakley's you know they'll do that so i can wear them um and i get a discount on those because you know they have u.s standard issue um, it's, it's a website that gives you a discount and everything. So that's why I have those, um, because, you know, I don't know if you guys have figured it out or, or seen those stupid things on my face, but I wear glasses. Yeah. Um, so these, you know, wouldn't work out for me. I, you can't wear glasses under them or anything like that. I mean, I could go back to contacts with these on, but these actually are, are comfortable. And like I said, lightweight, but the thing is, is it false advertising? Do they look cool? It's up to you guys. Decent glasses, though. I mean, not really high-end, but you can feel they're... I mean, not, but they're not claiming to be either. I don't know. I'm going to shut up now and put my glasses on. Decent glasses. I, I, would wear, I would wear them out. I mean, you know, if you guys said they look cool anyway, I would. But if you said I look like a dork, I won't. But, yeah, decent glasses. I mean, for the price, if, if they're going to say they're... You know, hundred dollar glasses. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay that for these. But they can. They're they're passable. They're they're they're, they're good. And you know, I guess high impact rated lenses is really the whole thing. Of course, Walker being a good range brand. But it, whatever. It is, uh, whatever. Sh shut up. Stop looking at me like that. Okay. Moving on. Thompson Targets Pack. USA made. All right. So we got a USA made. Um, and the sling is USA made though. I should point that out and I'm getting that entirely from the card where it says USA made um, And this is made in the USA exclusively for tack pack. I'm not going to open this because um, It's just more convenient to put it away for Kevin that way, but um, nice bright targets and center mass defense training, you know Center mass, oh God, I can still hear Drill Sergeant Beltree yelling center mass on Handy Bow Range at Fort Knox. Um, anyway, this smells some kind of like something. Newsprint? Yeah, kind of like some news. Yeah, I can smell the print on this. It's, it's not nice, um, but targets. Targets are good. I mean, you shoot at them. You need them. You need targets and bullets and a firearm for training. So that's good. I like that it's nice and bright though, you know, so you can see. You can see where you're aiming and your your desired target areas are are nice and clear. Did you guys see episode three of The Mandalorian where finally a human gets is talking to, to a Mon Calamari and he yells to the Mon Calamari, it was a trap. Like 
it's a really funny moment if you're a Star Wars fan. Sorry. Okay. I just, I don't know what about this made me think of that. But So we got the targets. And, you know, a decent item to have for your training. So, cool. We already talked about the sticker. Now, plus item number one is Fab Defense. It's the, oh, it's this. Is it this? It is this. No, it's not. It's this. It's the uh, the pop-up sights. Um, the backup iron sights. Which, yes, I do use on my own personal platform. And by platform, I mean gun. I said gun. I said it on YouTube. I said gun. I said the word like two or three times. Gun, 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 gun. Um, yes, on my rifle, I use backup iron sights. I think mine are by Magpul. I don't really remember right now. Uh, it, listen, I shouldn't have to explain backup iron sights to anybody. Um, so I'm not going to. Look it up. Look it up. No, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that because there's going to be somebody that doesn't know. So in the fabulous world of rail tops on your receiver and, uh, you know, it's you know, once upon a time, rifles came with sights hard fixed to them. Now we can mount all sorts of stuff and optics. And since the, the sights aren't built in to the, uh, the gas block on, we'll say AR-15s, for example, um, aren't necessarily built in to the gas block the way it used to be and made as a one piece with the, the, the uh, upper receiver like it used to be, you can you can have these in case something goes wrong with your fancy optics um, and these mount onto the rail and now i'm not sure how these these ones specifically deploy up because mine have a little button that you hit and they go up some just you i get oh these ones yep have a little spring and you just put them up and so then you can just like just like the good old days because I am one of those old, I am one of those old guys now saying what, they get to qualify with an ACOG on the range? Back in my day, Sonny, we had to put the post in the hole and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, you know, you, you do good old shooting. Um, a good, there are really cheap ones of these out there though. Again, for those who don't know, super cheap ones. Like you can buy them on eBay for like five bucks. And I've done it just to see what you get. And I swear they're like just the cheapest plastic and they fall apart on like they're loose. The things are loose. They don't, they rattle around as you move. They don't hold a decent sight picture at all. And then there are super expensive ones that are like way more money than you need to spend on one. And honestly, they're just as accurate as, as mid-range price ones. Um, you don't want to spend more than you have to. And you don't want to buy super cheap ones. So a good, in my opinion, my opinion only, a good, uh, mid-range one that holds your sight picture and is reliable and made of good quality materials is great. So this is good, definitely good stuff to have for any build. All right, now they give this a price of $90. No, I'm sorry, they give, yeah, $90. All right, um, and these are polymer ones. They also, they also come in metal. There we go. Um, and then this is by the way, uh, what is this? This is, okay, so now I can show you this about the knife, by the way. Now we got this QR code. And then you got that. All right. And then the last, um, the second, last item, but the second plus item is by Real Avid, who makes a whole line of uh, firearms cleaning and maintenance tools. The Air 15 Multi-Tool Carry Kit. Hmm. Now I'm just I'm gonna say it flat out. Their their knives suck on Real Avid. They are not they're not a knife making brand. They're they're not. But some of their tools are are decent. You know, like some of their tool sets are are cool. Uh, they have a multi-tool that I have that's, you know, pretty cool. But they're, the thing is, their tools are all, are all focused on on maintaining your, you know, your guns. Um, so but they, they always have a knife involved. 
for knife purposes. I mean, cause. So we need to figure this one out because I've never seen this. And uh, it has a thing. So anyway, it's got a solid metal belt loop to wear it on your belt. Now it says push here to release driver. Okay, so we've got a standard uh, quarter inch bit driver. It has some bits. They're a bit hard to get out. Ha <laughs> ha! Are you guys laughing? Please validate my jokes. Okay. Oh, this this whole part comes out from the rest? How? See, I, I don't want to be too rough, to, you know. Oh, this? Wait. Is this a... What the fuck? Oh, this locks the driver. Okay. And then this lets go back in. But this whole part seems to slide out. And then you have better access to the bits. There, okay. That makes it a lot easier. So then you have bits. Ah. See, I discovered this stuff in real time. Which lets you know people smarter than me should be able to do it even faster. So you have some of the more common sizes that you might need for working on your stuff. And look at this in A2, uh, A2 style front sight tool. And if you, if you know what it is, you know why you need it. And if you don't, then, you know, don't worry about it. I'm not going to go into that. But for adjusting your front sight post. Okay. Now on this thing. On this guy right here, I'm not holding my breath on this, but <laughs> yeah, uh, real avid knives are, are not the finest tools in the bunch, but they give you a knife and it does lock. Okay, great. Uh, what else do we have in here? Ooh, this will clean all manner of bolt, bolt carrier, firing pin, all sorts of stuff, scraping carbon away. For stuff like that. Cool. And again, I'm not I'm not gonna get really into it now. But you know, if you if you know if you know if you're into ARs, you know you know what this does, and you know what these things are for, and how they fit in, and stuff like that. Um, this needs to go this way. Does this open up this way? Yeah, it does. Open up this way. I say this is a takedown punch. Um, so to punch the pins, the takedown pins. I'm trying to get a good, make it focus. It's just weird that it's not um, round, but I guess it's got to be flat to fit in there. So, okay. Now, do all of these tools lock? They do lock. No, they don't. Yes, they do. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, they do. They do, see? So, no. Uh, and does this one lock? Yeah. No. Maybe. Yep. Everything locks. That's cool. Let's see what's on this side. Bolt override. Okay. Oh, I guess this is your firing pin scraper. So wait, what was I, uh... Oh, it's a pull your retaining pin. Okay. But... And this is to be inside of your bolt carrier scraper, but this is for doing a bunch of other stuff. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, there's a lot of areas on the on the on the uh, bolt carrier and the bolt that need to be scraped and cleaned of carbon. And this helps you do all that. And then this is a tap hammer, apparently. For getting things put back in place. And I don't know, it's a, it's an interesting kind of tool. Uh, ugh. I've been learning a lot about, you know, from Darren at the shop about having the 
specific tools to do the specific job. And yeah, it is expensive to have all the specific tools. Um, some of these things I could see working out pretty well. Some of the things I don't know if I'd want to. Although, you know, at the same time, Real Avid does have a pretty good reputation for, for making some pretty good pocket-sized tools and stuff to carry around with you. I don't know. Uh, you know, There are a lot of people a lot smarter than me when it comes to this kind of stuff. I still, I'm, again, I'm an old guy who is set in my old training ways and the world and technology has moved on without me. You know what I mean? And uh, what I learned through my career is not necessarily the new standard right now. And uh, so maybe this stuff is great and I just still want my little green cleaning kit. I don't know. I don't know. But you guys tell me what you think because we're actually done with the box. So now you guys tell me what you think of the box. In April, hints, standard box total, $100. Um, and then the plus box value will be 320 So what do you guys feel, thoughts and feelings on this box? Um, first of all, I know those of you who are not Shooters, builders, or enthusiasts will have very little use for anything besides these. Um, but what about the other associated items? How do you guys feel? Like it? Don't like it? Yes, no? Um, anyway, thanks to Kevin again for letting us take a look at what's in this box. And I'm sure uh, we have two, we have three. It'll be time to see Kevin again real soon. So anyway, thanks guys for joining me and I, I am really interested in what you think. And tell me tell me really about what do you guys, I mean, those of you who are on the range often, do you use real Avid stuff or do you, do you default back to the standard issue type, basic care and maintenance tools? Like what, am, am, I, am I just out of touch um, being the kind of guy who, who likes the purpose built kind of tools and, and stuff like that? Tell me, let's have a talk. Am I, should I, do I need to embrace the modern era or, or is this gimmicky? Like you guys tell me, um, what's up with that? So thanks for watching guys, appreciate you. Remember you are all absolutely awesome and I appreciate every single one of you and I'll be back again real soon.